it's Kristana and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today what I'm going to do is go over something that is really special to me. So about two years ago I became a living kidney donor and I donated my kidney to my friend Kim. So you know that a lot of the diseases have the awareness ribbons and the kidney disease awareness ribbon is green. And so every year around this time, so the 5th of December is actually my donor anniversary. And the every year around this time, I like to paint a piece in green just to honor that. I don't know. It makes me kind of remember and um, I think it's important for awareness for kidney disease. So what I'm going to do is kind of tie this piece into the holidays this year. I haven't done that. The other two pieces that I did, I did not do. I didn't tie it into the holidays, but my husband is from Maine and he really likes plaid. And so um, redesign with Prima came out with this really cute gingham red plaid transfer and so I think that this piece could really stay in my house all year round it could be really great for Christmas time the holidays and it also will be great for our home decor because my husband is really into rustic again he's from Maine we love plaid um, this is a staple in our wardrobe actually so I think that it's gonna fit our personality so if you like plaid um, or buffalo check stuff like that then this is gonna be the piece for you but I was kind of sitting there and I'm thinking what do I want to do and so I'm gonna use a color that I have not used very often and that is gonna be Dixie Belle's Evergreen. And what I'm gonna to attempt to do, we're gonna do this together. What I'm gonna to attempt to do is I'm going to do the Evergreen up here and I may add a little bit of texture with the sea spray with the Evergreen. And then I'm going to try to scrape it and get a chippy kind of look, but I'm gonna do that after. I'm going to also try to put the bottom, I'm gonna do Dixie Belle's iron and I'm going to do a rust look. So when you want a rust look, you're going to use the iron patina paint and then you're going to use the green patina spray. So that's kind of my vision. Okay. My vision is to do evergreen down into a rusty look, but we're also going to scrape it and get a little bit of some distressing chippy look. And then I'm somehow, maybe this, we might use this, we might not. I'm somehow going to try to incorporate burn red. I may do some in the creases and the corners, just something ever so slightly because green and red, although I know that these are Christmas colors, but because green and red are actually complementary colors. And so if you've seen my video on the color wheel, then you'll know what I'm talking about. These colors are straight across from each other on the color wheel and they go perfect together. It just so happens that we like to use them for holiday festivity colors as well, but they're great colors together. So we're going to do that. And then the rust is actually going to turn to like a brown, which is going to be great in there. So I'm hoping that we're going to turn this into kind of like a rustic cabiny. I don't know, Mainer holiday look. I don't, we'll see. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with mixing the top of this or doing the top of this with the evergreen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sea spray. You're going to need sea spray. You're going to need a mixer, your cup, and you're going to need your evergreen. And we are going to kind of paint it, dab it on, maybe scrape it on a little bit, um, go from there, and then we'll kind of move on from that. Okay, so for this one, what I'm going to do is I am going to actually put a scoop of the sea spray in there. And the sea spray comes with the scoop already, so don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about is it measured, you know, do I have to measure it, all that stuff. So I'm going to take a scoop of this because I am going to continue working on this piece. So I'm going to do a full scoop and just put it right into that measuring cup. Now I'm going to take my evergreen, okay, and I don't measure it out. I'm going to shake this up and I'm going to pour it in a little at a time and then I'm going to just show you the consistency that you're going to want. So we're going to pour some in. I'm going to take our little tongue depressor and I can tell you right now, I'm showing you this, that's too dry. You're going to need more paint. You can tell just by feel and look. So we're going to add a little bit more paint to it and you can hear the paint starting to mix in there, but that's still too dry. So we're going to add some more. 
and see how that goes. And kind of scrape the sides and get in there so that you know that they're getting in there really well. And I think that this is going to be a good consistency. Do you see that? The consistency? I think that's going to be a good consistency. So the next thing we're going to do is actually get our little scraper and our chip brush and we're going to start putting it on the top. Okay, so we're right here over on our piece and I've got my mix and I also have a scraper. This is just a plastic flexible scraper. Dixie Bell sells these and I'm just going to shove it in there and I'm just going to take it and kind of scrape down because I kind of want that little transition right there. I want that transition right there because I think I'm going to try to distress and scrape that up once it dries to get a little bit more of a chippy look. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just kind of flattening it down. Okay, so if you don't want these lines, like if you didn't want that to stick up, then you can go through and smooth it a little bit. This stuff is really great to work with. You can kind of just scrape it down. And I'm gonna continue that process all the way down. I'm gonna to try to stick to kind of like this line right here. Because I think what I'm gonna do is do the rust up here and kind of transition up. I don't know, it sounded good in my head, guys. So we'll see. Okay, so do you see how this is kind of sticking up? You can smooth that down if you'd like. I'm gonna smooth it down for this piece. I don't always smooth those peaks down, but I'm gonna kind of smooth it down for this piece. So we're gonna do our last little area right here. And we're gonna get that little crack over here and kind of smooth it down. And if you wanna add more texture, you could go this way. If you want it to look slightly different, you can go to, you can go horizontal and then go back vertical and kind of scrape it down. If you want to scrape it on the other side, if you wanna scrape it across. I mean, you could create a bunch of texture on here. So we're gonna just do that. Now, the next part is I'm gonna take my chip brush, okay? Because I wanna get up in these areas and I wanna get some texture up here. And so I'm gonna kinda of go down, brush down a little bit. So I stay with that consistency of just getting that little area. So I'm gonna brush down, but I would like some texture. I would like some texture up here. So I'm gonna texture this. And we're just working on the side right now. I will do this entire process all across the front. So you'll just continue this process across the front. I just think it's easier to work in sides instead of overwhelming you. Okay, so now what you can also do, and I'm gonna wipe that off because I think I'm gonna keep the stained top. Um, what you can do now is you can create some peaks if you'd like. If you create some peaks, it'll actually make it a little bit easier to scrape off if you know that you're wanting to do a little bit of a chippy look. So you can create peaks, okay? And let's just say, I'm gonna just create peaks on this entire thing, okay? Now let's just say you're like, uh, I didn't want those peaks on there. You can take this brush and either brush it down, okay? Or you can come back with your putty knife and just brush it down. See how we're smoothing it? But this kind of creates another texture. So when you texture it up, it kind of fluffs it up. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. It fluffs it up to add even more texture. So when you're doing this, you can kind of fluff it up, go down, fluff it up, and then take your putty knife and kind of go like that. And so then you've got these little textures right here that you didn't have before. So you can create that texture and then kind of smooth it down, but then you've got like these little craters. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. So you've got like these craters that you didn't have before, and that's by using your chip brush and then knocking it down. So this is cool. This is the kind of look that I really want. Again, later on what I'm gonna do is try to scrape up some of it to get more of a chippy look. But so these kind of will give you a chippy look in itself but that way when I scrape later, it's kind of, and you can you can flatten out these areas if you want. 
it's gonna pull off a little bit, but um, what this is gonna do is kind of go hand in hand with that chippy look, I think. So once I scrape some of it off, it will look like it was meant to be like that. Like it was ready to just chip away. So the next step we're gonna do is work on the patina area. So I'm going to put this stuff aside and then we're gonna get the patina rolling. So I'm going to mix the iron patina paint with the sea spray as well to kind of continue that textured look. Um, and then we will end up spraying it later. But first things first, we are going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little less of the sea spray into this one because this, the open time of the patina paints are not quite as long. And so I'm going to use a little less of the sea spray. And so now I'm going to shake up my patina. What you should do before you use it is you shake it really well, but I also stir it really well. Because this is a metal reactive paint, there's metal particles that could settle at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to pour a bit in here and then do the same thing that we did before. Again, this is not gonna be enough. So I'm going to put some more. and it's got a good consistency. So we're gonna start with the iron. Okay, so now we have our iron and we have it mixed up. So what I'm gonna do is go from the bottom and go up with our iron because this is gonna be rust once we finish the entire process. And I'm just gonna go right up into that evergreen. And it's okay if it mixes a little bit, not a big deal. This is slightly grittier than the other one because like I said, the open time is not quite as much, which is okay because this is actually good because we're gonna want our rust to be a gritty type. And I'm gonna kind of just rub across. So if you can see, it's already starting to kind of dry. So you've got to work fairly fast with this one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our chip brush and we're going to just dab these areas, kind of swipe it up a little bit, dab them. I'm not going to mess around with the iron paint too much because it is already starting to set and it's already starting to dry and actually we want it to be more crusty. So we're going to just kind of go over these other areas. You can go over top of it if you really want to, but it's pretty, it's got a pretty good texture on it already. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow that to dry, okay? This has to completely dry, and then we put our second coat of iron on there, and then we spray it. So we're gonna allow this to completely dry, and we're gonna allow this to completely dry. Okay, so we're back and the bottom part is dry. This is semi-dry, but while I was sitting there, I decided to change something, okay? So what I'm gonna do, and if you guys have been following me for a while, I kind of just wing things. So I wanna put a little bit of green patina on this piece. And what I'm gonna do is put some copper on it. I'm actually gonna put the copper probably like in the corners right here. And I'm gonna probably put it down here, but we need one coat of this first and we need it to dry before we do the spray. So I'm going to do that next part. I'm gonna put some copper patina in certain areas. Okay, so now the copper has dried. So the way the patina works is you have to do the first coat, let it dry, and then the second coat you put on and then you spray it. So I'm going to go over this, because this is the iron patina. I'm gonna go over all of this iron, and then I'm gonna go over all the copper, and we're just gonna spray it all at once with the green. 
The green with the copper is what gives you kind of a Statue of Liberty look, and the green with the iron is what gives you rust. So I am gonna go ahead and... I like it. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> I started you, Mom. Yeah? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm painting. Oh, you painting? Yeah, I'm putting this over here. You sprayed that? Not sprayed it yet. Now I'm going to put the coat of iron over top of the dry iron. And mix it a little bit with this copper. And this paint. Yeah, this is paint. You speed that? I didn't spray it yet. Okay. I will. I know you want to spray it, but you can't. You're little. Okay, so now I'm going to spray this. I'm gonna spray up here on the copper lightly. Make sure you have something down too. I'm gonna to spray over all the iron. Hey, what's that? What's that? Okay, and we're just gonna let this sit and do its thing. It'll probably be sitting here for an hour or two before we really start seeing results. Hi everybody, so we're back and this has been drying for about 24 hours or so. Now, one of the reasons why I put a thick layer of the sea spray on here is because I want it to kind of crackle up and fall off in some area. So see how this fell off and we're gonna touch it in some of the areas it's gonna fall off. And that's okay because we're gonna seal this later. But what this does is it gives us an authentic chippy look when we do that. And so what I'm gonna do is go over this piece and kind of touch it, let off any loose areas that are gonna come off when we touch it. So we're gonna just touch it with our fingers, kind of rub on it. Anything that's gonna come off is gonna come off. And then what I'm gonna do is take a scraper and I'm actually going to scrape down and I'm sorry for the noise. Scrape over it. Anything loose that's gonna come off is gonna come off at this point. So I see these a couple loose pieces. And so what this has done is it's given us an authentic chippy look. Now it is a lot thicker over here. And so that is why there's more chippy coming off. It's a lot less thick over here. So if you want more chippy, you're gonna put it on thicker. If you want less chippy, you're gonna put it on a little bit thinner. Okay, and then you can also take your, if you want this to come off, you can take this scraper and you can kind of go up in these areas and scrape it and it'll come off and you can kind of control where the chippiness is a little bit more. Um, and down here, do you see how the rust has done its thing? So we've got the rust and we've got the green patina, we've got the green patina around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of Put my hand across this, make sure I get everything off that needs to come off. I'm gonna kind of scrape it like this, get all the excess off that's gonna come off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal it with one of Dixie Bell's clear coats. So either the clear coat or the gator hide. I'm gonna seal the top of this in. And that way I know that this is gonna stay put. So that's really it for this finish. I'm going to continue doing this on the rest of the piece and then I will show you a picture in a little bit. 